please start uh, with our first guest uh, from Russia. Um, since the situation here is getting worse and worse, and just recently we knew uh, that a uh, 19 years old um, citizen of Ukraine was kidnapped uh, from uh, Belarus uh, uh, and nowadays held in a detention place uh, in, in Russia, it's almost 70 such kind of person, uh, hostages of, of Kremlin. What actually lawyer um, can do in this situation when there's a huge pressure, uh, when there is a numerous such kind of cases, when authorities try to basically throw out you from the case? Uh, so how you manage to protect these people and uh, uh, can you tell us more about your concrete cases and what we can do, what kind of recommendation you provide? Please, Ilya, floor is yours. Thank you, Lodmila. Good evening to everybody. Dobry vechur. Uh, thank you so much for coming. I'd like to to present you with one of my cases, Ukrainian cases. Uh, we have uh, we have small problems with big screens, so I will show some pictures on this small laptop screen. Please uh, excuse me for for this uh, uh, unfortunate situation. I'd like to tell you about the case of Mikola Karpuk and Stanislav Klich, who were both uh, convicted and sentenced by Supreme Court of Chechen Republic in Russia for uh, 22 and 20 years of jail time for allegedly taking part in uh, hostilities in Chechnya in 1994, 1995. Uh, this is a strange case. Uh, I should start uh, with uh, with a very uh, very uh, with a statement. I'm I'm very sure of it uh, that uh, both these people are absolutely innocent. Uh, the strange situation is the reason which uh, we supposed made Russian authorities to target target them and to make them victims of such a uh, kangaroo trial. Uh, we believe that the main reason for uh, these two men, Mikola Karpuk and Stanislav Klich, to be put on trial and sentenced uh, for Russian authorities is to uh, put a pressure on one of Ukrainian prominent politicians, Mr. Arseniy Yatsenyuk, who used to be Ukrainian prime minister in 2014-2016, uh, uh, and the uh, the plot of this trial, plot of this case, uh, in uh, in short terms, is that in 1994, uh, in, uh, when uh, uh, civil war uh, was uh, taking place in in uh, uh, Russian uh, Russian uh, Northern Caucasus territory in Chechen Chich Republic, uh, on the side of Chechen rebels against Russian federal troops were acting uh, some some group called uh, Battalion Viking, Battalion Viking, consisting of Ukrainian citizens, uh, most of whom uh, will belong to a nationalist group, so-called Yuna Yunso. Uh, as far as we know, there were uh, very very few uh, very few Ukrainian citizens who actually involved in the sections, namely Alexander Muzichko, who was uh, later killed in uh, 2014 in Ukraine, uh, and two, maybe three other Ukrainian citizens. But no, uh, no, absolutely, uh, there is no, uh, there is no, uh, not a chance, not a possibility that that such such a big military group as a battalion consisting of uh, 50 to 100 person uh, could be. Uh, in Chechnya in this time without making any uh, any any information, any pictures, any uh, evidences, so what. Uh, we believe that uh, Mr. Karpuk and Mr. Klich was, uh, and that uh, information is corroborated by uh, the, not only their own statement, but uh, corroborated by statements by Ukrainian diplomat personnel who uh, first uh, was uh, uh, who was uh, was able to see both of them Karpuk and Klich, uh, after a year of their imprisonment in, in Russian. 
the consul, consul uh, Ukrainian consul said that uh, after a year of being in prison, Karpuk and Klich uh, both uh, were uh, were marked with uh, with um, uh, specific specific marks on their skin, which proves that both of them were tortured with electricity. In 2014, shortly after both of them were in prison in Russia. After they uh, were, tri were, were convicted and were sentenced by, uh, by Russian court, shortly after that, we uh, knew that uh, Russia placed a red notice in Interpol against Arseniy Yatsenyuk, insisting that Arseniy Yatsenyuk was also a member of this uh, battalion Viking, who also uh, who was uh, 20 years old at the moment, he was a student of a law school in Ukraine, but Russian authorities insist that this man, uh, his, uh, his biography, his career is well, very, very well known, uh, was in Chechnya and was fighting against Russian uh, military personnel and uh, personal, was personally involved in killing at least 30 uh, Russian soldiers. So, uh, it's absolutely clear that uh, these two men were found guilty, were uh, were put on trial for political reasons, just in order to extort false evidences against Ukrainian politician, and that this situation cannot be resolved in some simple measures. As far as I know, uh, Interpol excluded this red notice against Tsinyuk, stated that uh, it was politically motivated, but uh, this uh, then resolve the overall situation because Karpuk and Klik both stays in Russian prison in very in very harsh conditions, and uh, uh, as Ukrainian authorities uh, made a few uh, a series of statements, uh, stated that release of these two people as well as the others, uh, so-called uh, 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 so-called hostages. Uh, let me also say the hostages. Uh, Ukrainian foreign minister used the term. Uh, illegally detained Ukrainians in Russia territory. I believe that uh, at the moment we have more than 50 persons on the list uh, by Ukrainian foreign ministry. Karpuk and Klich are on the top of this list because of uh, the lens of their, uh, their sentences, of their present term uh, declared by Russian court. So uh, we, uh, we call all the people, uh, we call all the human rights organization the politicians who may be in touch with, with this situation, to do something with this, to persuade Russian authorities to stop this uh, ridiculous and uh, at the same time harsh uh, politics against these two people, as uh, now it's absolutely clear that uh, nobody outside of Russia believes uh, these, uh, these ridiculous accusation, ridiculous charges. Uh, now it's absolutely clear that the main target uh, which, uh, which we believe was a uh, Russian target with this, this criminal case, is unachievable, and it's uh, highly a time to, to do something with Karpuk and Klich. We had a series of statements by Ukrainian president, by Ukrainian authorities, uh, declaring that uh, this two-man release is uh, of high priority for Ukrainian, Ukrainian diplomats, Ukrainian authorities, but uh, within the last year, since two Ukrainians were exchanged for for uh, one one Russian citizen and two Ukrainian citizens who were uh, detained in Ukraine for some sort of separatist activities, it was in June uh, 2016. No uh, progress was made in this field. We had some hopes that Karpuk and Klich, Whose sentences are sentences are the most uh, most lengths, most most harsh of of the list, uh, as well as sentence of uh, Oleg Sintsov, who is well known uh, as a uh, film director, who was sentenced to 20 years as well in Russia. We believe we believe that uh, the uh, release of these two people uh, is on uh, on the list on the agenda uh, of uh, so Minsk Minsk contact group. Uh, where uh, the Russian representatives, as well as Ukrainian representatives, as well as representatives of so-called Lugansk People's Republic and Donetsk People's Republic, 
discuss the matters, including the exchange of detained persons. But as I said, no progress was made. So uh, I believe that uh, this, this situation must be, must be on top of every agenda when any negotiations with, uh, with Russian side take place. I believe that uh, every time we remind uh, Russian representatives that without resolving of uh, hostages problem, will be no, uh, no serious progress with any, any other issues, with sanctions, with, uh, for example, uh, World Championship of Football in, uh, in 20, uh, 2018 in Russia, with uh, any other issues. Uh, without such a, such a resolutive politis, uh, poli politics, without such a uh, constant reminder, we believe that uh, these two people, as, uh, as well as uh, others from this list, deemed to stay in Russian prison for many, many years ahead. Thank you so much.